In this video, we'll be discussing about chromosome bending. It's a standing technique for chromosomes, just like we stand cells and their components in order to visualize the cell components under microscope. In the same way, we can stand the chromosomes in order to visualize the different regions of chromosome. The chromosomes at metaphase stage of mitosis are standard via chromosome bending technique. The technique stands chromosomes along longitudinal axes. And the pattern of standing is in a way that chromosomes are standard in bands, dark and light bands. If we see the chromosome, it has got P and Q arm. And in this way, the dark and light bands are formed by chromosome bending as shown in the figure. And I forgot to tell you that the metaphase chromosomes are in a highly condensed form. And that's the reason they are well standard and easily visualized. And we see the chromosome bending is used in cytogenetic analysis. In this technique, the cells are first grown in a short term culture, in vitro conditions. Then these cells enter metaphase of mitosis. And it's here where we have to work. The metaphase chromosomes are standard. But cells will continue to grow further and can complete the cell cycle. That means the metaphase will enter into anaphase and so on. But to get over this problem, the chromosomes are paused at metaphase stage. At metaphase stage, the chromosomes are treated with mitotic inhibitor like colchicine, which inhibits microtubule polymerization by binding to tubulin component. And in this way, the cells are arrested at metaphase stage. And then it's these metaphase chromosomes which are standard and it completes our chromosome banding. Now let's see the different chromosome banding techniques which are used in cytogenetics. The first important banding technique is G-banding, which gets its name from the gemsidae used in it. First of all, the metaphase chromosomes are treated with trypsin, which partially digests the chromosomes. It basically digests the proteins here. And after the trypsin treatment of chromosomes, the chromosomes are standard with gemsidae. Upon standing the chromosomes, we get the dark and light bands. The dark bands are AT rich region, that means they contain adenine and thymine bases mostly. While as the light bands are GC rich region, that's guanine and cytosine. Then there is R banding, that's reverse banding of gymsa standing. Why it's called reverse banding is that what dark bands are in G banding are light bands in R banding and vice versa. First the chromosomes are heat denatured, then standard with gymsa dye. And from this procedure, we get dark and light bands also. But here the dark bands are rich in GC, while as the light bands are rich in AT, that's adenine and thymine. That's the reverse of G banding, what we get in G banding. Then we have Q banding, where the chromosomes are standard with quinacrine dye. That's why it's called Q banding. And we get the same results like in Jimsa banding. Dark bands are AT rich region, while as the light bands are GC rich region. And finally, we have C banding in which we denature the chromosomes first with barium hydroxide and then stand with them gymsa dye. And in this banding technique, we get the dark bands only and these bands represent the constitutive heterochromatin. So these are banding techniques, how we stand the chromosomes. Although there are other banding techniques like T-banding and NOR banding, but these are the major ones that we have discussed. So now, what's the use of these chromosome banding techniques? First of all, we see it defines the karyotype of an organism, while we identify and evaluate the size, shape and number of chromosomes in the cells. Through this, we will be able to see whether the chromosome is acrocentric, telocentric or metacentric and other parameters like chromosomal aberrations. So this is all about chromosome bending and the various techniques of standing the chromosome. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.